Installing Deltec Roof System. Stage roof components for ease of access during installation. Setting jack truss bundles inside footprint is a good option. Attach the eight foot long pre-cut rabbited top plate to the tops of each upper level panel using specified attachment. The top plates have been notched to properly locate the roof trusses and the ends have been cut at the correct angle for your particular model. Notches should angle downward from the inside toward the outside. The top plates are centered on each panel, leaving at least 1 5 8 inch between plates for the hip trusses to rest. Here, workers use blocks of 2 by lumber to mimic the width of the hip truss to ensure adequate spacing. Hip trusses do not bear on field applied top plate. They have bearing blocks installed on the truss at the Deltec factory. Set up scaffolding in center of house to temporarily hold erection jig. Install two rows of scaffolding to walk boards. The compression ring is temporarily supported by erection jig during construction. Assemble the erection jig. The erection jig consists of three pieces and an adapter ring, sent as required for model size. The center portion is adjustable to the rough required height for each model size. See construction drawings for height requirement. The bottom support has a screw jack for fine-tuned adjustments. The erection jig can be pre-assembled and lifted in place or assembled in pieces over the steel top plate. Roughly mark the diameter of the erection jig bottom plate centered over the floor top plate. This allows for accurate placement of the erection jig. Ensure jig is plumb. As the jig is plumbed, nail blocks to the walk boards to secure the jig, using the scaffolding and walk boards as a temporary brace. Recheck the plumb of the jig and its height to the floor. Ensure that the jig is positioned in the center of the house. An adapter ring may be required to sit on top of the erection jig to support the ring properly. This will be included in the package if required. Make fine-tune adjustments with a screw jack at the bottom of the jig. The compression ring is very heavy and can cause serious injury if it falls. Fasten it securely before proceeding. Lower compression ring down on top of the erection jig. Temporarily secure compression ring to top of jig utilizing ratchet straps. Ensure that the compression ring is level and plumb. The first truss to be set is a hip truss. They are easily recognized by the small wedges nailed to the bottom of each truss. Do not remove these wedges. They are designed to fit between the top plates and act as guides for the ceiling slope. Lift the first truss into place. Move the wide end of the truss toward the compression ring. The bottom edge of the wide end of the truss is lifted onto the lip of the erection jig. The overhang end rests between the top plates with a wedge resting directly on the wall panel itself. Do not nail the exterior end. A 16D sinker nail is then driven through the ring into the truss. Holes have been pre-drilled at the top and bottom of the ring for this purpose. The second and third hip trusses installed can be approximately 120 degrees from each other. On even-sided or larger homes, four hip trusses at approximately 90 degrees from each other should be used. This is very important for safety because opposing trusses help to stabilize the compression ring and keeps each truss in the correct position. There may be a tendency for the roof system to pinwheel. Please consult the construction aids and Deltec support for tips on avoiding this occurrence. When these trusses are installed, make sure all overhangs are equal lengths from exterior wall to ensure system is centered in the house. Temporarily nail these trusses to the wall to lock in the system. Nails will need to be removed later. Set all remaining hip trusses, then set all intermediate trusses. If you've been verifying all of the wall panels are the correct distance from the center and plumb, then the wedges on the bottoms of the hip trusses will be uniform with one another on each panel. All hip and intermediate trusses should touch the compression ring at the bottom with an eighth inch gap at the top. Confirm this after setting approximately eight trusses to allow for adjustments of the trusses or erection jig height. It is advisable for ease of access before setting the last intermediate truss to drop in the tension collar and allow it to rest on the bottom cord of trusses. Insert provided bolts with washers through tension collar holes on both sides of the collar and then attach the end washers and nuts. Use clamping device or provided starter bolt to bring tension collars together if needed. The collar should be located as far down on the king posts as possible. 
Tighten the collar halves uniformly until all the trusses are pressed against the compression ring and the wood starts to compress. Consult the construction aids and Deltec support for further information on collar installation. Stage jack trusses at install locations. Attach block to underside of hips at jack truss bearing location. Place jack trusses on the installed block, each side of hip truss. Temporarily secure jack trusses to hip truss using shown zip tie connection until final connection can be made. After subfascia installation, continue installing jack trusses in this method till all jack trusses have been installed. The subfascia boards are 2x6 lumber with pre-cut ends. Note the subfascia will be covered by trim material, so the angles at the ends of the subfascia can vary slightly without affecting the final appearance. The long end of the subfascia will be vertical and the cut angle faces toward the house. Lay out the subfascia for the center, two feet to each side of the center. Align the trusses as necessary to ensure that the trusses and tails are straight. The tops of the truss tails and the top of the subfascia should all be flush. A string can be stretched across the tops or ends of the truss tails to be certain that this is the case. Permanently fasten the jack trusses for specified connection. Before installing the roof sheathing, install the inverted truss hangers by wrapping them over each truss. Do not nail at this time. The pattern for the roof sheathing on each section of the roof is shown in the construction drawings. Take the two pieces of outermost roof sheathing which extend past the wall. Lay them in place between the hip trusses and nail in place. Sheathe the roof in a half circle in the same manner that you sheathe the floor. Continue around the roof until all sheathing is installed. After sheathing is installed and erection jig removed, attach the inverted truss hangers to the panel header as specified in the construction documents.